Hello, everyone, and welcome back to How to Chess. Of course, we are a weekly chess improvement show. We talk to titled players and improvers alike. And this week, we are joined by an improver that I'm a big fan of. I heard him on the Chess Journeys podcast, and he's got amazing enthusiasm for chess and also an admirable work ethic. Uh, a little bit more about his biographical Info. He is Florida based. By day, he's a manager at Disney, and by night, he's doing everything else in the world. He's a musician, a podcaster, an author, and as I said, a relatively new chess diehard. He's one of the Queen's Gambit converts. Shout out to all the Queen's Gambit new chess fans watching. And hearing him talk about chess just made me want to hear more from him. And uh, what we're going to talk about today is sort of how to approach your second tournament, because our guest Omar Mills has played exactly one tournament. And obviously, that was a very educational experience. And we had a friend, friend of the show, Neil Bruce, give advice for what to do for your first tournament. But our guests can give advice for what to do for your second tournament. And it's also fresh advice since he played his first tournament this very year. And as we will speak, is training for his second. So before we dive into all that, though, let's welcome our guest to the show. Omar Mills, thanks for joining us. Ben, thank you so much for having me. It is uh, a pleasure. I, I, I feel like I can say, Mama, I made it. <clears throat> if I'm talking <laughs> to you. <laughs> when you get invited nice to, to talk to Ben, that, that's a, you, you have made it. Nice, nice of you to say. Well, as I told you before we were recording, I listened to your chess journey interview twice and enjoyed it so much that I feel the same way, Omar. So it's a mutual admiration society here, but that's not what people are here to listen to. So we're going to talk some chess. Um, are you are you ready to dive in and uh, yes, share sir. some share some advice uh, based Absolutely. on your experiences? Okay, yes, sir. So my first question, Omar, is what will you do differently for tournament number two? And I, I imagine this could be the whole show, but, but let's hear it. <laughs> uh, literally everything. Um, the first time going in, and you heard me talk about this on the other show, the, um, you have no idea what to expect. Um, I'll give you one example that's very practical and very common, but you just don't know it. <clears throat> you, first time I sit down to play, I don't have any water with me. And so you're going you know, 90 minutes or whatever it is, and there's nothing to drink. And you don't realize how thirsty you become. Um, I, you don't realize how, like, I got up in a, in a full sweat from the game. And it didn't, you know, it wasn't that long, but you're just, you're drenched. Like you just played basketball or something. And so there are little things that uh, really, that you don't think about that end up being major factors. I, I mentioned this before, um, getting to the table first so you can set your board up, getting there early. Uh, one thing I'm going to do differently is I'm not going to look at, all I want to know is what table I'm going to sit at. I'm not going to look at ratings. I would look, I would search out, let me see what rating this, this dude is that I'm getting ready to play. And all that does is you psych yourself out. Um, there's a there's a quote, there's an article that's floating around with Nepo uh, right now. And one of the questions, I read it the other day, and one of the questions they asked him was, you know, are you afraid? And I loved his response. I'm rooting for Magnus, but I loved his response. And it was, should I be? <laughs> you know, and his, and I said, man, I said, okay, I like that. Uh, yeah. Because why should he be? He's getting an opportunity, right? And so you have to have that same mindset, I believe, when you go in. If you're sitting down across the board from someone, you have to believe that you can beat them. Because if you don't, then you shouldn't, you know, is, is my mindset. And I'd say the biggest thing I, I have to have is I've got to, I'm going to play a lot slower. Um, and I, have a, I actually have a plan. And it's a, so all the things that you don't know for the first one, you take all those things and say, okay, I'm gonna make sure I have, I have water. I make sure I'm prepared. I make sure I have this and that and so forth. And like, because my first tournament was, was local to Florida, I was commuting back and forth every day. So you're kind of at a disadvantage because you don't have a home base. You can't go to your hotel room and take a nap. And so you've been sitting around a lobby the whole time, you know, just trying to find somewhere to be. And if you lost, which I did quite a bit, you're sitting on the floor of a hotel lobby thinking about how you lost until it's time to play again. 
you can't go take a nap. You can't go do something else. You can't, there's no other way to sort of empty your mind. You're just sitting around for three hours agonizing over, why did I play that? Why didn't I, why didn't I see that? And then you go down and you sit down and you play again and you lose again, usually to somebody who's 10, right? So the, <laughs> these are the things that, that will mess with you. Whereas if you are located at, if you're staying at the facility where the event is taking place, which would be the case this time, uh, you have a place to retreat to. You can go get alone, get in your thoughts. You can go take a nap. You can go get something to eat. You can go. There's nothing else. You're not worried about your parking. And, oh, man, are they going to tow me? Is it? You're just, you're fully in the moment and fully engaged. One of the other things I didn't do was take advantage of, you got GMs walking around, just walking around. Yeah. And I'm so worried about other things that I never got to take advantage of them just sitting there. You find out pretty quickly and easily who they are. And they're willing to sit down with you. Break out a board. Everybody's got one. There's 400 of you in, in the location. You break out your chessboard, they will talk you through all sorts of positions and different things and give you, you can get those nuggets and those gems. I didn't take advantage of any of that because my mind was everywhere but on the chess. And that's just that psychological difference will be huge you know, going into this next one, just that handful. And that's not even beginning to cover my preparation going into this next one. You know, I'm actually preparing um, because w what I thought I was doing before was preparation. It wasn't. It was, I was playing a lot and I got some random coaching here and there <clears throat> because I, my coaches and, and I had only just started working together. And in fact, the whole concept of having a coach was sort of like, uh, maybe, oh, they have coaches. Like, hmm, maybe I should do that. It was more of that prior to going into it. And it's not like I got coaching and then said, hey, coach, I want to prepare for the Southern Open. Let's come up with some training plans and what I'm going to play when I open and do this, that, and the other. I had just randomly gotten some coaching sessions, uh, played a bunch of blitz games, and said, you know what? I'm just going to enter the 1500 and under section. Let's just see what happens. And I went in there and I got destroyed. You know, I managed to get a lucky punch and get one win. But, uh, you know, and it was all instinct. One of the things that uh, the butcher tells me all the time, um, he's <laughs> one of my coaches. He's like, you have good instincts for chess, but your tactics need work. And he's absolutely right. Um, so on instinct, I might get you one time. You know, and I went in and, and, and had that. But for the most part, if you know what you're doing, and and I run out of ideas or it's not clear, one of the things I've noticed is that, you know, I don't have, I didn't have the tactics or the understanding or even the thought process around those types of things because I hadn't been taught it. I was, you know, if I wanted, it was on instinct. Oh, well, let me try this. You know, it was a, you know, random BS go, if you've seen that meme, you know, in terms <laughs> of, you know, for chess, it, it's, a, that was like my style. Whereas, now it's starting to become more surgical and starting, you know, the, I'm listening to my coaches more and, you know, I'm beginning to understand different things, you know, about having like the concept of having a plan was introduced to me by Bruno Tuzzi, um, who's one of my other coaches. The other thing I would say around just coaching in general, um, I have, I've worked primarily with three, uh, Bruna, uh, Big Mayo and, uh, David Mensick. Um, if I had it to do again, I'd have one, you know, because sometimes when you have multiple coaches uh, for at the same time, you get conflicting counsel. You know, you'll have one coach that'll tell you to play one opening and another one say, no, 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 you should play this opening, you know, instead. And you're like, well, what do I do? Both my, you know, both, all of them are better than me. You know, which right. one should <laughs> I do? You know, and so that can be, I remember when I was at the, the first tournament in between games, I ran into, uh, a lady who had a kid that was playing at the tournament. I was just running into one of the uh, uh, restaurants at the hotel where you could just grab something to eat. So I'm just getting some quick serve and standing in line. And she says to me, hey, you know, I saw you playing, you know, uh, you know, and my, my kid here is playing. And I said, okay, that's great. So we get to talk. She's like, you know, what tournament are you going to do next? And I said, well, I just kind of randomly decided to play this one. <laughs> so I don't, you know, I don't know. You know, she's like asking me, are you going to, like, she's doing the circuit, you know, with this, getting this kid ready oh, to yeah, be the next yeah. GM or what have you, right? So 
She's like, okay, well, you know, do you have a coach? And I said, I have three. And she said, you have three coaches? Why? And I said, I'm thinking, well, isn't that better than, you know, like, shouldn't you have a bunch? You know, and she was like, no, you should have one coach. And I'm thinking, oh, I d-. like, there's so many things that you just don't know. Um, another big thing then would be, uh, and I say this to all my fellow Queen's Gambit converts, when you get the chest bug, one of the worst mistakes you can make, and this is, again, this is just my opinion, but uh, I think it, it holds water. Uh, I would tell you not to buy a single chess book. Not one. Not a single chess book. Um, or if you're going to buy one, buy the one your coach tells you to buy. And you study that one. I would rather you spend an hour a day doing puzzles. If you buy a chess book, buy, buy a book with calculations. And just do that. And you know, play one or two games, 15-minute time control. And when you get done playing that game, analyze it, review your mistakes. And that, you know, do more puzzles, play a single game here, there. Because if you play a 15-minute game, it's 30 minutes. And if you analyze it, you might spend a couple hours looking at move by move and getting ideas, you know, around that. What I did instead was I bought every chess book I could get my hands on. Because sometimes that gets addictive too. Well, let me get this book. Oh, yeah. Well, this person recommended that book. And let me get this and let me get that. And uh, the other big thing is I'm going to look at all, because everybody and their mom has, you know, a video, a YouTube channel now. Well, let me look at this. And let me look at this <laughs> Twitch screen, uh, stream. And again, I'm not uh, disparaging don't any forget, of that. Don't forget the they, podcast, Omar. You got to podcast, right? Podcast. right? Yeah, yeah, everybody's got podcasts too. <laughs> all these things are amazing and they're great when you know how to use these tools the right way. When you're me and you don't know what you're doing and you're trying to figure out, you know, all these things you can consume, you know, if you're going to watch a uh, uh, Gotham Chess has a bunch of amazing opening videos, that opening might not fit your style. But you don't know that until you, you know, you assess it. But your coach will be able to tell you, hey, you play like this. Um, Big Mile told me that the other day. He was like, he's like, you're an attacking player. I was like, I am. And he's like, yeah, you don't defend at all. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> he's like, you want blood, you know, was kind of his, his assessment. He's like, you should play this. I don't know that until, you know, I'm looking at all kinds of things. I could show you some of my early games uh, where I was just, I, I buy a video from chess, uh, uh, Fritz trainer. Well, let me let me try this. Oh, you no. know, and try that. Yeah. <laughs> right. And yeah. A little, there was one. My, the advanced. first video. Yeah. The first video I ever got uh, that I I still haven't finished, but I thought um, I just thought the title was cool. It's called the White Sniper, and it's all about. It's essentially a um, reverse colors uh, Kings Indian defense, and you know the whole idea, of course, is that that uh, that bishop is just comes out early. Uh, it's essentially a variation of the English, you know, but, um, just slightly different. And the, it's cool if you know what you're doing, you know, cause it doesn't go for the center at all. You know, you're just kind of hanging out there and me with my low elo self was like, I'm going to play the white sniper because it's got a cool name and got destroyed, got absolutely destroyed, you know, playing these things. So the... The impatience that comes, and th- we talked about this a little bit before we started recording, uh, around Queen's Gambit. Queen's Gambit will not tell you how bad you are at chess. <laughs> <laughs> Queen's Gambit will have you believing that you are Beth Harmon. And I had to look in the mirror and say, you are not Beth Harmon. Beth Harmon is fiction. Uh, Omar, you are real, and you are not as good as Beth. You aren't as yeah, good you as actu- you actually lose games. Beth Harmon. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. yeah, I lose games. I lose a whole lot of games. I lose <laughs> as Beth, many games Beth, as Beth won. Yeah. Beth lost about once a year. Uh, there's, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> there's, uh, there's so much to follow up on from that. First, I just have to tell this story, Omar, hearing you talk well, about picking the white sniper. When I learned chess, I had a similar story to you in that I learned how the pieces move when I was six, but I didn't know there was a chess world until I was 12. So I found out earlier than you, but still there was a long gap. Um, And at some point, once I got into it, I had this, I'm old, so I had this big opening book where you just like leaf through it and pick the openings, um, one of these modern chess opening type encyclopedias. And my friend said, you should play the scotch. And I said, and he wasn't, he didn't even play chess. We were just hanging out. And I, I said, why, why the scotch? And he said, because I, because I like that drink. And he was 12, first of all. (laughs) 
<laughs> so he was 12, which is one red flag. But the other thing is I actually played it. So from there, I'm playing the scotch for like years. And actually, it was a decent choice for me. But um, just a that's funny fantastic. story. That, <laughs> that is, I'm, you know, that that's awesome. That's and awesome. Actually, I yeah. like scotch. So, you know, we've, we've, Listen, that, worked out. That, that, that opening <laughs> chose you is what it yeah. sounds like. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But I, I wanted to get into a couple other things. So first of yeah. all, I should have said at the top, your provisional rating is 970. You've played five games so far. And, um, your first one was in July in Florida yep. where you're based. I love the insights about like Springing for a hotel room if you can afford it. That makes yes. a big difference. Um, having a place to squat, if not. Um, stuff, <laughs> stuff like that really right. does make a difference. But one burning question I have, Omar, is why the long wait? I mean, you know, from July to December. And is your next tournament in Vegas? Is that right? It's in Vegas. Yeah, I'm playing the North American Open. Uh, it'll be uh, Christmas week. And I waited that long. I was tempted to do some other ones. But when you go one and four... Huh. It's You're totally like, normal, by the way. Yeah, which, I mean, here's the thing. This is the crazy thing, um, and I will you know, uh, get to exactly why the long wait. The, the, the short answer on that is I was terrible, and I knew I was terrible, and I don't want to be terrible. I want to go in. Let me go in, and if I'm going to go, because I got seven games coming up. Um, that's the other big thing is that I don't ever take uh, pay for buys. I don't ever do that. Okay. Because, uh, one, I need my rate. You know, you got to get what, 30 games in order for your rating to actually stick? And, you know, so yeah, I don't want to have although, a provisional rating. Oh, although one yeah, might advise not to rush that, Omar, because uh, the ratings, once they become established, they change a lot less. So, I mean, it depends if your goal Ooh. is to make money or to have it reflect your chest strength. But if your goal is to have your rating reflect your chest strength, then, uh, then there's out. something to be said for taking your time while you're learning online. Huh. Okay. Uh, that is sound counsel, and I receive it. That is wisdom. I will absolutely receive that. I hadn't thought about that. My whole thing was, okay, I want that rating. But to seven stick, months, but to that's already, point, yeah. or six months. Or, well, I can sorry, tell you. Sorry ben, to cut you off. No, no, you're good. The, Go ahead. So it kind of worked out in a weird sort of way that uh, I waited, but didn't realize that that was what I was doing. It actually uh, right. would work out. But to your point, the um, when I lost, you know, you go one and four, and you lose a bunch of games and you start to realize like the, after the second game, I almost quit. Yeah. I was very I was... close to quitting. Yeah. And you don't ever want to feel like that. You know, it's a, cause quitting can become a habit, you know, so you stick it out. And I realized, I said, it wasn't that I was, you know, a bad player, it, but it's a, the beautiful thing. I, heard, I can't remember who, who said this. Um, I'm quoting somebody. The beautiful thing about chess is that it's unfair to everybody mm -hmm. and chess doesn't care that you didn't prepare. You know, as well as you that you went in and thought you were prepared and you were new and you watched Queen's Gambit. It's like, nope, you're gonna go in because that 10 year old sitting across from you did prepare. Yeah. And he he wants to win. And he should win because he's been doing it longer. You know, he's a better player. He was, he's supposed to beat me, you know, in that in that instance. But if I pre prepare and I do all the things, like, you know, I'm I'm learning it the hard way and getting beaten up and uh, you know, uh buying too many books and confusing myself and I'm watching videos on openings that I don't understand <clears throat> and trying different things and, you know, playing stuff. And I'm like, well, the pattern says I'm supposed to do this, but you don't understand any of the theory behind it. You know why that move was played. I'm not saying that there's anything completely wrong with that, but these were all of the, the mistakes that I made going in that I just didn't even understand that I was making. And you want to give yourself time to to get enough failures in because your success is predicated upon like, this is why I don't really believe in failure because there's no successful person that will ever tell you that they got there with, you know, with the exception of maybe Beth Harmon, you know, who right. <laughs> says I didn't fail at all. I was just, you know, I won all the time. I lost once a year it, it, in fiction. It happens in real life. It doesn't, you're, you're going to lose a lot. And those losses, uh, you have to have them. You've got to have those those losses. Uh, one big thing that I've been doing differently now is um, I'm admittedly addicted to playing. I can't stop. And as much as I would love to be as disciplined as I'm suggesting other people do, <laughs> I play a lot more than I should. And my coaches tell me all the time, they're like, dude, can you, you know, limit it to one and, and do puzzles? And I don't want to do puzzles. 
I want to play. I want to take blood. I want to take chess souls. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. <laughs> and, you know, I can't, I, you know, so one way that I've been disciplining myself, um, because I tilted really badly on rapid uh, time controls on chess.com. I think it was like in February, I lost 15 games straight because I just kept going. I mean, and that's the right. whole point of these apps, right? You, you're going in and you're, they just want you to keep playing. But I remember at the start of the tilt, my rating for rapid on chess.com was at 945. And by the end of the tilt, it was in the low 700s. Ouch. And it's in a single <laughs> evening, right? You drop 15 straight, depending, like, and you don't know, you, you don't even think about it. And it took me seven months to get it back to 1,000. Seven months. One, because I was terrified to play the to play it. Um, so I played a lot of other, like I played a ton of blitz, but I was scared because of, you know, you're shell shocked from yeah, PTSD. Rapid, the PTSD <laughs> yeah. with it, right? So when I finally got it to a thousand, I haven't played it rapid on chess.com since. I was like, I'm gonna get it there and I'm never touching it again. And uh David says to me one day, he's like, dude, you need to start playing uh more rapid games. If you're gonna play. Play 10-minute time controls. Give yourself a chance to really have time to be able to, you know, and play a little slowly. And so I, be, I was a chicken and I went over to Lie Chess <laughs> to play, to play right. them over there. So I, you know, so that rating can stay safe. And what I'll do is um, first thing in the morning, I'll fire up a 10, uh, 10 plus zero. And usually there's at least one game where I play terrible because you got to wake up. That's the wake up game. And then you play a little bit better. And um, I think the other morning, I lost four straight. Um, usually, I'll go about two and two. Uh, today, funny enough, I went two and zero oh because I played slower. But the other day, I lost four straight games. And you're just sick. You're sick because you 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 know why. You can see. You're like, why? Did, oh man, why did I? But I remember after losing those games um, in the morning, I had a session with uh, the butcher right after that and he's like you know um one thing i love about him this is uh coach Mayo is one of my favorite coaches. i love all my coaches but he 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 one thing he does that i i absolutely adore is uh and i imagine he does this with all of his his students um but it's a very cool thing um he calls you champ uh -huh. hey champ you know good to see you champ and i imagine when you've got as many students as him it's easier to call everybody champ because <laughs> that way you're name, not messing yeah. anybody's name up, right? Right. right. Um, but I, t I take it a little bit differently. What I hear when he says that is he's projecting to you how he sees you. If you're with him, you're a champion. And he doesn't lower the bar. He has talked to me the same way now as he did close to a year ago when we started training together. It's the same thing. His expectation is you are going to be this. You are going to be a champion. So that's how he coaches you. And so what's interesting is that you're trying to play to live up. Because if you go to his page, you see all the champions he's coached. I mean, it's like a, a who's who, you know, list of people that he's had a chance to work with. And you say, man, if, if I'm going to work with him, I don't want to be the one that sucks. You know, I want to be the one. I want to make <laughs> that. I, mean, I want to make his Hall of Fame, right? So the – you. you you start to talk with him and it starts to become a thing where you're like, well, am I, uh, you know, if I play bad, is he going to react? Is he going to be upset? You know, you don't want to let your coaches down. And he was, I had to tell him, I'm like, yeah, I lost four, I lost all four of my games this morning. And he was like, well, what happened? What's going on with it? You know, send me the games. Let's take a look at it. So I started, you know, tell him about it. And he's like, yeah, you're playing way too fast. He said, you're playing entirely too fast. He said, you've got to slow down. He said, we're going to work together. We're going to work through. He said, this is why I'm here. We're going to work together through it. You know, and he was very gentle and very calming and very soothing, even though the bar's still here. You're still, in his mind, you're still a champion. But he's, you know, he's like, he started to get me to see where he's like, it's not that you forget how to play. He's like, you know how to play, but you're not seeing everything because you're not giving yourself a chance to see everything. And just that one nugget. He was like, count to 10. He said, you know, before you make a move, just get in the habit, count to 10, and then start to look and start to assess. And that, that evening, I played four more. I won all four of them. This morning, wow. I won all two right. in a row just from, uh, in fact, one game uh, that I played this morning uh, is black. I played too fast, and then I caught myself, and I slowed down and uh, managed to figure find a way to win i still could have lost the game as i went back and I, I evaluated it but i got lucky but i gave myself a chance 
you know, for that reason. Anyway, all of that to say, these are things going into the first tournament that were not top of mind. You're not thinking about things like uh, pawn structures and, hey, I'm going to make this move to create an imbalance, you know, on my opponent. I'm going to sack this piece so that their pawns are doubled and so that I can get checks and do that. All of that comes with coaching and training and all those things, you know, that are not top of mind when you're just, you know what, I'm going to play the Southern Open just because it looks cool, you know, versus I'm going to give myself time, you know, to, to have enough failures so that when the turn, the next tournament comes up, uh, I have enough information in, in the can to just give myself an opportunity. I've played over 8,000 games now in the, wow. in, the, in a year. Yeah. It's, um, you know, and I'll spend like chess is my part-time job. Like it's all, when I'm not working, it's all I do. And even all, all of that, all it does is give you an opportunity to maybe go on seven because those guys are training too. And so the, you know, I don't go in any in there with any delusions that because I did this, it's not a, rocky 80s training montage and now you're going to go beat you know drago or mr t or whatever you're, you're going to you what you're giving yourself is an opportunity to hopefully represent everybody that's poured into you well and that's anybody who has played me in a uh classical game training game who's kicked my butt and there's a bunch <laughs> particularly uh-huh. with the chess punks uh they are good about beating me to death uh you know in playing but all of that, you just want to represent for them, you know, and for the people that that believe in you and, and cheer you on and 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 are encouraged, you know, for you and uh, all the, the the friendships and the people that you make. You just want to just want to play well. And if you're training and you're you've got that that mentality of I'm going to give give it my all, you know, uh, then you you you're prepared. Then you have an opportunity. These were things that uh, that focus that I just didn't have going into the first one because you just don't know any better because you watch the TV show and you got inspired and you say, let me try something. Now there's something to be said about that too, Ben, in that sometimes you just got to try stuff. You can't be afraid to suck at something new. Um, and this is something else that Mayo, you know, encourages, you know, is that, you know, chess is confidence. Uh, Bruna says this to me too. Chess is confidence. If you, uh, the more confident you are, in how you're going to play, the better you're going to perform. Um, but it's also an understanding of if you've done the pre- preparation and you do the things that you've been taught, you give yourself the best opportunity uh, to win. You know, um, but just understand that that other person, if they're doing the same thing, there's a guy who's kind of become my new chess nemesis, uh, Daniel Lona. Um, he beats me every time we play. In fact, I'm in the middle of a daily with him now. Uh, I'm playing it online but also making the moves over the board and i'm in trouble (laughs) in that particular game um you know but he it's a he's a reminder i love playing him because that's what's waiting you know that's that's what's waiting for me at the next level was a guy that's you know somebody who's training has that same mindset who's going to and what do you have to do then you know what's preparation for the third one going to be like based on this you know, I think the, the the window gets tighter. I think it gets a little bit more difficult because the air gets a little thinner because everybody's preparing, you know, as you go. But this is building a strong foundation, you know, for, for those things to come. So I think the second one's going to be a lot better just because I'm going in with a mindset that other folks who may be going in may not have this, who may not be preparing as much. And I think you might have some some more opportunities going in just based on that. But a tournament this big, I can't imagine anybody going in there is going to be, is just winging it, you know? Yeah. So you have to give it your, your best, but I think it'll, it'll, it'll weigh itself out. It'll, it'll, you know, the curve will flatten, you know, I'll have some wins. I'll have some losses. I'll have a lot of good learnings and things, but the biggest thing is just, I'm not going anything in with any delusions of grandeur. I know how to prepare. I know what kind of training plan I want to have my focus is better. I'm listening to my coaches. I'm having the failures. Um, and I have the experience from the last one to know what things that were not part of the game that messed me up again, not having, if you can have a hotel room, get it. If you can have a, or just a quiet spot, 
that you can go and say, I, it'd been better if I'd just gone and sat in my car. You right. know, but it's Florida and it's hot, so I'm not going to do that. But right. you know, if you just have a, a cool corner to sit in and take your mind off of things, um, all of that makes you know difference. Having a, a top of mind of if there's somebody walking around who is you know a better player than you, pull them aside, talk to them, show them you know walk through your game with them. They might have a, a nugget or two for you in terms of your analysis. These are all things that I wasn't thinking about before right. that I'm really looking forward to implementing for this next one. Amazing stuff. So many gems, Omar. Um, awesome. So, and first of all, yeah, I want to give a shout out to Daniel Lona of Chess Punks. It's a great tradition in chess that like you have sparring partners, you know, and it's all, it's all a part of the learning process. You're in it together. Sometimes, yeah, as you described, Daniel, sometimes you're the one where like maybe that person wins a little more often, but they're kind of contributing to, to the learning um, experience by playing someone that they usually win against, but then they might have another friend that they play that always beats them, you know? And like, right. so it goes like on down the chain and everyone can learn from experiences like that by, by giving, um, to, to each other. Now, Omar, we got to do the three improvement takeaways. I love hearing you talk yeah. Jess. Um, so here's what I've come up with. Um, I mean, again, so many gems, it's hard to even just summarize, but number one, I really like what you said about control your environment, um, which can mean different things. But what you mentioned about having a nice place to squat in between rounds, ideally a hotel room, what you mentioned about getting there early to use your chest set. I know you said you have a nice chest set, like that can be a good comforting feeling to not have one of these like plastic ones with pieces falling apart, um, grainy boards, all that stuff. Number yes. two, I felt like a recurring theme in this interview was the idea of taking your time, which obviously in the course of a game, that means taking your time. Don't rush through the moves when people, especially when you're newer to chess, I think there can be an instinct to just move um, without necessarily thinking things through. I know your coaches have given you some good advice about how to think through that, but also the fact that you're taking your time in between tournaments. You feel like, all right, that was um, that was a shock to the system. I'm going to take some time and process this and apply all these lessons I've learned, but I don't need to dive right, like, right back in, especially with what we said about ratings where like if you want your rating to represent your best self rather than like I want to get a low rating and win some money then it can be good to take your time to to let your chess knowledge grow before your rating becomes established and the number 3 takeaway uh, I love what you said about don't quit by the, by the mm. way that feeling you describe in your first tournament of like just oh man what am I even doing you know <laughs> why why did I yes. come here like that never goes away so what I like is that <laughs> <laughs> what I like is that you're prepared this time. It's because yes. it's not it's not like oh I'm going to show up and I'm not going to think about quitting. It's like I know that, that when I, I know show that up I'm going to think lose, about quitting. Yeah, yeah I know I'm going to think about <laughs> quitting, and that uh, that c helps you prepare the counter talking points to tell yourself like when that inevitable moment happens. And then if you do decide to quit someday, like hopefully it's made not in like the heat of the moment. You know, um, I can't but, quit until I, I get that draw with Magnus. Exactly. You know, yeah. yeah, I got. I got to get it. Yeah. Yeah. Ex <laughs> exactly. Your, your time will come. Um, well, Omar, this has been awesome. If people want to keep up with your journey, how should they do so? So on uh, Twitter, that's the, the best uh, place to do it. My uh, uh, Twitter account is uh, at Chess Von Doom. It was a playoff of Victor Von Doom. Um, for, for a while, I was big on, uh, and I still do it of. Uh, showing some of my i'm chronicling chronicling my games a little differently now on twitter but you know because i'm showing really more of an analysis you know as i've gotten a bit closer to the the tournament and gotten a little bit more serious but occasionally if i'm playing a blitz game or a bullet game and i get a you know a, a quick mate or something i'll throw a meme up and for a while many of them were of dr doom and i, I changed from chess chronicles to uh chess von doom so at chess von doom um and you'll see uh a an icon of an angry looking wizard okay <laughs> so and yeah uh, yeah and that's uh you know that's me so they can uh keep up with it you know that way you know absolutely excellent i'm yeah, on instagram we'll too but you know um occasionally i'll do on instagram the uh uh you know like uh some analysis videos or what have you but twitter is where i am for the most part Excellent. All right. Well, Omar, great to hear it. And uh, we might need a third tournament report when the time comes. But uh, yeah, good luck on to. the grind. And uh, and yeah, I'm, I'm sure if anyone sees you in Vegas, they can, uh, they, as yes, you say, say, say hi, look please at some games hi. and all that yeah. stuff. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Thank, thanks a lot, Omar. This has been Thank fun you. as expected. Thank you, my brother.